everybody! Before we get started today, I just want to wish all the wonderful mothers out there a very special Happy Mother's Day. And today is a day that we celebrate all the wonderful women that are in our lives. The women that love us and nurture us, that care for us, teach us and guide us. Today is a day that we honor you and we thank you for all the wonderful things that you do for us today and every day. So it could be someone you might be celebrating, um, a teacher or an aunt or a, or a nan or a mom or a friend, but somebody in your life that has shown you love and guidance and taught you wonderful life lessons, today is a day that we honor them. So make sure whoever it is that you're celebrating that they know it by giving them a big hug. If you can't give them a big hug, then send them a message, do something kind for them, but let them know that they are loved today and every day. So thank you to all the wonderful women out there. Thank you for everything that you do for your families, for your friends, for everyone you come in contact with. We honor you and we love you. So that being said, because today is Mother's Day, I thought it would be a really nice idea to focus our talk on the women of the Bible. Now, I was thinking and thinking and thinking, and the more I thought about it, the more stories that are popular in the Bible are about men. You have Adam, and of course you have Eve, but Adam was first, and you have um, Moses and the Ten Commandments, you have Noah and the Ark, you have Jonah and the Whale, you have Daniel and the Lion's Den, you have Jesus, you have all the Twelve Disciples, you have Paul. So I had to really rack my brain of the women in the Bible. And the more I thought about it, the more I came to realize how important the women in the Bible are. And how profound and how, how big their stories are and how, what a huge impact they had for their people at that time. So I just want to talk about a few of the women in the Bible, not go into great depth of them because there'll be other times where we talk solely about them. So one of the first ones I thought of was Esther. Now, Esther's story is really cool. She was just a Jewish girl, just my own business, when the king said he wanted a new wife. So he got all the, all the young girls, all the young women that could get married, and he had them basically put on a beauty pageant for him. And he picked the one that he liked the most. And while you might think it's really cool to be a queen and to get married to a king and live in a castle, in those days, the queens didn't really have a lot of say. Well, Esther got to become queen. The king liked her and he married her. But there was a bad man in the castle and, and he wanted to get rid of Esther's people get, and, and so that they wouldn't be around anymore. And when Esther heard about this, she said, I gotta do something, I gotta stand up to him, I gotta stand up because I believe in God and I believe what he's doing is not right. So it took her a lot of courage, but Esther stood up to the king and she saved her people. And that's really, really important because if she hadn't done that, who knows what would have happened that during that time. And so it kind of set the groundwork for more women to be able to say and do things and have their voices heard. So I think that's a really nice story and it's really important that, you know, women have courage and girls have courage to be able to stand up for what's right and do the right thing when when God calls us to do the right thing. And God called Esther and Esther listened. So that's a really important story for us to remember. And then of course, I was thinking and thinking and thinking and, and then I thought about, well, what about Mary? We have Mary, the mother of Jesus. How important is she? She is so important. She was a young girl who was gonna get married and all of a sudden, an angel comes to her and says, you're gonna have God's son, and you're gonna name him Jesus, and he's gonna do, be great and do wonderful things. Well, I think if I was Mary, I would be a little bit freaked out. I'd be a little bit scared and wonder, what's going on? Um, I'm not ready for this. No, thank you, you got the wrong person. And the angels just said no. You do good things, 
God sees favor in you. He looks favorably upon you. And he knows how strong you are to be able to do this. Not only did Mary become the mother of Jesus, but before that happened, she and her husband Joseph had to take a long journey to Bethlehem. And where did she have Jesus? In a stable, in a barn, full of animals, but she had him. And then she got to watch as Jesus went on to do great things and wonderful things. And she got to say, that's my son. I raised him. I helped raise him. And without Mary, there, might, there wouldn't be the stories that we have today. So Mary is so important in the Bible. And she's an important woman and an important mother in the Bible. There's another Mary to remember, Mary Magdalene. Now Mary Magdalene, she became a follower of Jesus, like one of the disciples. But before that, she did things that weren't always the right choice. So she decided she was going to turn her life around and she didn't want to do those things anymore. So she asked for forgiveness. She said she was sorry and she was forgiven and she followed Jesus and she became so important. And in fact, on when we celebrate Easter, when we hear the story about Easter, Mary is the first person to see that the tomb is empty, that the stone has rolled away. And she is the first person to actually speak to Jesus after he's been resurrected. So without Mary Magdalene, who would have seen the tomb being empty? Who would have been the first one there? Would we have the knowledge of Easter and the joy of Easter that we have today if Mary Magdalene wasn't there. I don't think we would. I think because of Mary Magdalene, we get to celebrate Easter and how joyous it is and and everything that that goes around it, how we got to see the resurrection. It wasn't it wasn't just sad, it was joyous and it was happy. And Mary Magdalene helped bring us that. So there's so many important women of the Bible. If you open up your Bible, I'm sure you could find even more than what I said. But like I said, I didn't want to go into great depth into all the stories. But another time, we can definitely go into depth with some of them. Now there's so many more women. And I don't think I would be able to name them all, even if I wanted to. But I want you to stop for a second and I want you to think, what woman is important in your life? What woman has helped you gain courage, like Esther? What woman has been strong and has given you strength and shown how to be kind and good and, and looked favorably upon by God, like Mary? And I want you to think, what woman in your life was able to say they were sorry and stop doing the things that they were doing before that weren't good choices and follow Jesus and follow God and listen to what he had to say and listen to the teachings. What women in your life are helping you? I know me, my mom helps me. My mom is one of my best friends and I grew up knowing her love and because I grew up knowing her love, I also grew up knowing God's love and Jesus's love. And my house was full of love. I've had countless teachers throughout the years that have given me confidence and pushed me beyond my abilities to do the best I could do. I work with wonderful women co-workers who teach me every day and help me and challenge me and help me become the best I can be. And I work with young children and I get to nurture them. I get to love them. I get to cherish them and I get to teach them. And without all this in my life, I don't know where I would be. So I am so grateful for the women that I have in my life that have taught me. And I'm so grateful that I get to learn about the women in the Bible 
that have taught us so many wonderful things. And without them, we wouldn't have the stories that we have today. They had so much strength and courage and determination and a love of God that I want to have, that I strive to have, and that I hope you want to have and you want to strive for. Because I know that we can. Because I know if they could do it, we can do it. I can do it. So the challenge this week, last week we talked about good deeds and, and what good deeds you could do. I know my good deed was when I was grocery shopping, um, my brother likes certain kind of tart, pecan butter tarts actually. So I bought him a package of butter tarts and I left them on his doorstep because right now he can't leave his house. He works away and he has to stay inside and he can't go and get his grocery. So I wanted to get him a little treat. So that was my good deed. So I'd love to know more about your good deeds. But our challenge this week is to post a picture of the woman or women who inspire you, who help you, who love you and encourage you. It could be, like I said, it could be your mom, it could be a teacher, it could be a nan, an aunt, it could be a friend, it could be a neighbor, but somebody that is important in your life. Somebody that you learn from, that you grow from, that, that you can see the love of God shining through them by what they do and how they help you. Because God is in all of us. Even if we don't even realize it, he's there. And he's always wanting to help us. And if we look closely at the people around us, we'll see God in them. So your challenge this week is to post a picture of the woman or the women that help you and love you and teach you. And you can post them to this website. I didn't have it last week. I hope that's not backwards. It's um, St. Mary's Church at nl.rogers.com. So you can post your, your pictures there. Um, so before we go, like we did last week, we're going to end with a prayer. So if you remember, we fold our hands so we're not touching anybody. We bow our heads to give respect to God. And we close our eyes so nothing's distracting us from the prayer. And at the end, when I say all men and you repeat it, that means you agree with the prayer. So ready? Dear God, thank you for the women in our lives. Thank you that today is the day that we get to celebrate them and we get to honor them and we get to show them the love that they are always showing us. Help us to never forget the love and help us to always show it, not just today, but every day. Help us, Lord, to be like the women in the Bible, to give us strength and courage, to give us determination and to give us such a strong love for you that we know nothing is impossible. Help us, Lord, as we go about this week, that we will do good things and will be kind to others so that people will see your love shining through us in what we do and what we say. Please bless us this week. Keep everybody safe and everybody happy as we continue on in our, in our journey. Pray this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. So I hope you guys enjoyed today. I know I did. Have a great week and I'll see you next time. Bye!